Thank you uh, for this opportunity, Ganesh and uh, Balaji and the team here. It's my pleasure to be here for, uh, uh, to discuss this very, very interesting topic or very, a topic which is very close to my heart. Uh, this is one area where there is a, a whole, uh, uh, what do you say, chain of uh, partnership what is needed. We have technology, and then we have the consumables, which is one of the most important aspect here. And then, you know, we have uh, uh, the, the uh, manufacturing because that is something which is very important. This is one machine, you know, which runs almost, you know, uh, 18 hours a day because continuously, because there are people waiting for dialysis and this has to continuously keep working. And this is one of the workhorses, you know, in any hospital. And we also have a policy which is very important. We have the National Dialysis uh, Program and we have PM Care and all that, which is uh, being rolled out since to, uh, 2015. And we have, uh, that, that's one of the very important things because government is very much, you know, uh, involved in uh, this uh, uh, making policies for this uh, field. And we have the most important, uh, that is uh, the nephrologists. Uh, who are the backbone for this entire thing. So we have made the panel accordingly. So first I would like to invite uh, Mr. Krishna Swami. Uh, he is the managing director of uh, Brown Dow, uh, which is a company which is, a, which is into very making high quality at low cost, I would say. So they make consumables for dialysis. And he has a rich experience. Uh, with uh, the aerospace industry, uh, he had an uh, earlier company which is into aerospace and has made uh, a lot of uh, success with that. And uh, it's uh, nice to have you here, sir. So the next, uh, I would like to invite uh, Ms. Devika. She is a senior deputy general manager at uh, Bharat Electronics. Uh, she is uh, pioneering this effort of making uh, manufacturing these dialysis machines and uh, the, the, there is, she heads the R&D for medical devices there and it's a challenging task which she has taken up. Of course, she has uh, more than around 20 years of experience but uh, in that, uh, for the last uh, two years, they have been to medical devices. They started with the ventilator program as we all know and oxygen concentrators and this is one device which is uh, which is uh, which they have taken up at a, you know, on a war footing, I would say. So welcome, madam. And then we have uh, Rohit Singh. He's from Nephroplus. So Rohit is uh, the main the management team of uh, Nephroplus. You know, Nephroplus is the largest uh, dialysis service provider in this country, and also uh, they are there in the neighboring countries and they are growing very fast. And uh, Rohit comes with an MBA, and he has uh, worked uh, for his experience of more than 18 years in this field, earlier with hospitals, and now is a part of the management, management team of uh, Nephroplus and taking care of business development and new initiatives. And then we have Dr. Kedar. Dr. Kedar is a, uh, he is a, uh, retired uh, the IAS officer, of course, and uh, he has been uh, very instrumental in policy. Dr. Kedar has been uh, the, uh, you know, the uh, secretary and uh, finance secretary when he rolled out this Aishman Bharat, uh, sorry, Yashaswini program in Karnataka. And later on, he is also with CGHS uh, when he was in Delhi and uh, he has been very closely associated with the policy making of this of the country, and uh, there are a lot of things uh, to tell. But uh, I think it's limited time. You know, we would like to hear from him some of these uh, examples. Welcome to you, sir. And then, not uh, last but not the least, uh, Dr. Rachin Mehta, and he is a <laughs> nephrologist. At, uh, at the government hospital, uh, the ter tertiary care here in Karnataka, that is the Euronephro department of Victoria Hospital. And uh, 
he has uh, uh, he's an md nephrology and uh, he has been uh, working uh, in this field for a long time and his experience uh, in terms of digital health uh, he has been very active with all these uh, programs and uh, we can hear from him what are the challenges he faces and what are the things they are thinking about so with uh, with this uh, team i would like to quickly get on to the uh, uh, to the questions and uh, firstly let me ask uh, uh, mr krishna swami to tell us about uh, the the you are the one sir you have a lot of experience uh, you have more than uh, 25 years of experience in uh, nephrology earlier you have been also you know uh, distributing uh, Uh, brown dow uh, um, bibron machines and uh, you you got them to india and you set up business for them and then of course you have been into the consumable space so you have seen the way the nephrology has evolved in this country so uh, what do you think uh, could disrupt the thank you dr sham uh, good evening ladies and gentlemen uh in india we have come a long way in nephrology i think when we started we hardly had about 200 machines across the country today we have 50000 but even that 50000 is woefully inadequate we need something like 300000 machines to take care of the patient demands that come year on year i think one of the things that we need to look at both from the medical equipment and the medical devices side is our country is what pharma was about 25 years ago 25 years ago pharma was nowhere or fairly insignificant but today see where they are we are known as a pharma of the globe and i think medical devices and equipment is in a similar phase in india there's a lot of headway for us to grow but how do we do that one is make in india which i think is where the government has stepped in and i think they are going to give more and more support for this make in india program because as dr sham said nephrology is one of the most complex fields because yeah what is what affects dialysis is geography affordability manpower investment and quality service if i need an ultrasound wherever i am i can travel down to the nearest place get an ultrasound and go back no problem if i am on dialysis i have to live near a dialysis center i have to change my entire lifestyle i have to move away or i have to travel long distances because i need the facility every third day i can't do without it so geography becomes extremely critical in dialysis affordability i think people have said enough and ganesh said that we are one of the lowest cost service provider in the world i think mr rohit can second me on that subsequently manpower balaji mentioned we have 1800 nephrologists which is extremely low so how do we make that 18000 or even 25000 it's not possible to do it physically so one of the ways to look at it is to go virtual see how we can expand that space and how we can work around these problems thank you uh so 
you you have heard that you know we have around uh, 50000 dialysis machines and you know it's around 300000 machines what we need so if you see there's a great demand and also you know we need very robust very reliable systems here uh, and congratulations that you have taken up this challenge and you are also you know partnered with one of the companies with uh, making the uh, most latest uh, technology machines and uh, being a defense uh, oh yeah, you come under the defense ministry and uh, uh, you you have been working on various uh, such systems how do you think you can scale up uh, this production and what are the plans uh, for bel to take up this challenge thank you sir actually all of us know hello most of us know that uh, bell has got into medical electronics devices only after covid because of covid pandemic uh, government of india interested bel hello bel to support them in combat of this covid 19 and bell identified a partner who, who had a ventilator already and then we went into a series of uh, discussions with them and then we finally asked the partner it's uh, scanray from mysore <coughs> and then we but uh, for covid there were additional features which was required apart from what was available in scanray machine and bl partnered means along with drdo to scale up those additional features into the machine and as you all know that uh, bharat electronics is only into defense this was first time which we entered into electronics medical electronics it was rather a new field for us with limited domain knowledge but we all get up to the requirement of government of india and we realigned our entire infrastructure and the resources to meet the medical requirements and then we could make 30000 ventilators in just 90 days this is just identifying the partner identifying all the features required for covid pandemic requirements of a ventilator and then scaling up along with the partners we had to tie up with many and you know it was a lockdown situation almost all the in the entire country was under lockdown logistics were a problem we in fact brought so many msmes into and we had to reach to the government of karnataka and government of india see that all the lockdown restrictions are not there for these companies which are supporting us to manufacture the ventilators so this was a big herculean task for us but then bl could come out of all this we realigned our resources we gained a limited domain knowledge required for that particular moment we went we even got iso 13048 for certification just one month it was really a remarkable achievement for bl because we are all to always into defense equipments like radars and sonars all this we could do only with agile production system capability which enabled us to establish the manufacturing infrastructure to produce around 500 to 1000 machines a day we had the support from drdo labs and government of india we in fact indigenous many critical components which were required which was to be imported from outside and in that lockdown and covid pandemic situation it was highly difficult for us to procure those so we had to indigenize along with drdo and we manufactured in house itself we had our own sbu which could manufacture the valves required for the ventilators and all the as i already told all the resources and infrastructure we realigned to manufacture medical devices it is it was only pass, possible with excellent partnership among the public private and the government agencies working toward together for the nation's cost nation's cost having said about all about the ventilator success story we a strategy to enable dialysis expansion and enable affordable dialysis to people is to focus on atmanirbhar and make in india saying so we have partnered with renalix sham sir to manufacture their indigenous developed indigenously developed rxt70 dialysis machine hemodialysis machine 
and we are also having an MOU with Genworks so that these manif uh, machines manufactured by Bell could reach the dialysis center required as spoke about, sir. So that's wonderful. I think uh, we cannot think of any better partner than BEL to really scale up and make this uh, uh, scale, uh, you know, manufacture this equipment. Thank you. So uh, going to Mr. Rohit Singh, uh, Nephroplus has been the largest uh, uh, service provider uh, in the country and also in neighboring countries. And in this experience, what are the things you know? Which are the what are the problems you see, and uh, what type of business models uh, do you see evolving to cater to the needs of these smaller dialysis centers, the micro dialysis centers, and things like that? You know, dialysis on wheels, all those what you are experimenting with. Thank you, Dr. Sham. <coughs> I think uh, uh, good evening to every uh, person present here on a Sunday evening. Thanks. A uh, very intense question which is covering every aspect from small to the problem statement to the scale. Uh, I think we at Nephroplus, Nephroplus is a 13-year-old organization. Uh, the DNA, uh, we are operating 320 plus dialysis centers servicing over 24,000 patients per month right now. Uh, India has uh, active patient base of 2.5 lakhs, out of that 22 to 24,000 is serviced by us. Uh, we are now in four countries, and we are in fact developing world's largest dialysis center in Uzbekistan as well, which is 170 bedded only dialysis center. Uh, but beyond this scale, I think uh, what Nephroplus has done well is to reach into the various cities. We are operating in 190 plus cities in the country right now. Out of our 300 plus centers in India, uh, majority of them are in tier two and tier three town. So we are not an organization which is concentrated towards the metros only. And we also work with the governments on the PPP projects, standalone centers, and captive units with the private institutions like Max, Fortis, uh, Ruby Hall, and many more other partners. So, so it's the whole spectrum of, of dialysis delivery that we are involved into. To come to your point that what are the problem statements uh, that we are facing and, and what are the innovative models here. How I'll take the problem statement is, is dialysis, as Chris rightly mentioned, India is operating at the least price point possible in the world, probably in the world. Uh, uh, other geographies that we are right now working in or aspiring to work in are 2x to 3x this price point. So there is uh, not a marginal difference. There is a, we are a fraction of them. So, so to, uh, to have that problem statement of having a fractional price point, health being a federal subject, every state having their own policies, and then uh, there is care delivery happening in the corporates and, and, and this huge amount of nursing homes which are operated without any, I think, uh, uh, Hari spoke very well about how do we get that continuity of care and, and some kind of standardization. So the, the challenge that happens in the dialysis delivery that it has to solve for access because the person has to come to a dialysis center thrice a week. So we have to be close to home. For being close to home of the ultimate patient or guest, we call it in the nephro, uh, nephroplus terminology, uh, we, we need to be uh, having the right ecosystem of payer mechanism because it's a perpetuity treatment, it's not one time. So the right payment model, uh, right availability of trained resources. Trained resources are, are very, very, uh, constrained as soon as we st step out of these nine to ten cities in the country. So the trained resources is, is a very big challenge that we face uh, there. Uh, and also, I think uh, government has given a good push by the PPP model under the National Dialysis Mission, but that is still covering the tip of the iceberg. It still requires way more, uh, many more steps to be taken up. Aishman Bharat, from a government point of side, was a good scheme where the government decided to move from a provider to a payer model. But again, being a federal subject, every state has to imbibe that and, and, and then uh, design a policy which a service provider can work along with. So there remains a gap in delivering that care of state and center level aspirations merging together. There remains a significant gap in the uh, 
partners that we work with because from the corporate to nursing home, the delta is huge. Uh, that becomes a huge constraint. I touched upon the resources, trained resources, which in India I think is a big problem and we all collectively as, as, as uh, part of the ecosystem need to solve for that problem. These are the key constraints that we see in solving for access. We've been lucky to look at or, or being at the head of the curve during the pandemic, we came up with concepts like dialysis on wheel, where we, where, because these people, people on dialysis are the most immunocompromised. For them to come in a environment where infection is very high in the hospital, we created dialysis units that are mobile inside an ambulance and it could go reach to the house of the people. We started that in uh, three cities. Then we realized there are many hospitals who have ICUs and other inter inpatients, but they don't have dialysis units. So they have to move patients when the need of dialysis come. So I think that has really picked up even when COVID has gone down, so the dialysis on wheel demand is, is normalized. But dialysis on call is the second concept where we have a plug and play model. We go inside a hospital, not the home of the patient. Now this is hospital. We provide dialysis and come back. And, and we have seen a significant interest in that. And that's how you are enabling uh, dialysis care at the last mile. And then we are right now operating at 10 cities on the dialysis of care. So such models, I think, in the care delivery have to evolve as we go forward to uh, solve for the access problem. Wonderful, sir. That's a very, very insightful thing. Taking the lead from there, uh, two things. One is, uh, Dr. Kedar, you have been the Director General for ESI. And then during your time, you have also done this, um, you know, started medical colleges for ESI medical colleges. And uh, that's to build capacity. And uh, the other thing is also the these Yashashwini program. And then you, you have been involved with CGHS uh, very intensely. Uh, so now that we have this national dialysis program, how do you see the effectiveness of that? Because since uh, 2015, it has been there. In every budget, it is there. But the number of uh, machines and the center, that has not grown that significantly, as at least what we see on the ground. But uh, what do you perceive, and how do you think this will? Uh Sham, once a bureaucrat, always a bureaucrat. <laughs> so first thing I would like to tell you is a disclaimer. Whatever I say is my personal view. Yes. It does not reflect the views of any past present or future governments, okay? <laughs> I am safe. I presume that there is also no media inside this room, okay? Now, first thing that I would like to tell, uh, no, this scheme, whatever you are talking, cannot be a disruptor, cannot take this program anywhere else. For a simple reason, one is numbers that government speak of are very, very small. Insignificant. See, Friday budget of Karnataka government, one lakh cycles in the whole year budget for Karnataka. Okay, that's the first one. Second, of course, he has been quite modest because he's sitting next to me. The rates that we fix, whatever is already half, one third, two thirds, or what, in that we further fixed very low. Third, government is good at least, even in that low rates. Episodal, we are good. Surprise, somebody goes for one surgery, goes back, no problem. Unfortunately, you are a problematic man. You are a chronic, you keep on doing. So one problem is we don't only give low rate, we are also not a very prompt payers. Especially if he's doing, I don't know whether he's doing in ESIC Rajesh Jinagar Medical College because we were, we, we were the first to call for a PPP mode. I'm sorry, don't hit me, but uh, I, I, I had called you for that. And I, I suspected that you must have been doing that. Uh, you have a lot of patience, keep it up. So uh, ESIC is a better pay reasonably when compared to state governments and central, central government schemes. So reasonably better. I'm not claiming much. So because of that, these things will not happen. So uh, PPP will run away. He is not running away. Maybe he has some other problems, constraints. So now, how do I, 
what can be a so PPP cannot be government program cannot be a disruptor in a case where it's a chronic one. So one way I'm thinking, I know I, since you know me, I'm a mad fellow. I'll speak and then I leave it to you. Uh, in government, we have a concept as finance secretary, we have a concept of a CES, right? CES is a year marked one and that will be used for that. Now, if we can catch hold of somebody like uh, Jagannathan, he star, star health insurance, big man, a great man. I had some issues, I went to him and he came out with a novel thing. Now, what I am telling may happen or may not happen. Suppose we have some concept that for any health insurance in this country, you have also got Irida, so he is also a reasonably good man. Earlier Kuntia was there, but suppose you have an any health insurance, we have a small amount as a cess. Towards dialysis. That cess is irrespective, whether you are going to be patient or not a patient, it's a cess collected on every health insurance premium that people pay. That can be pulled and through that if you want to do, the disruption can happen, lakhs of people can get benefited, then you can have the economy of scale. Look, in India everything is scale. Probably two, 470 aircraft plus another 340, even 20 countries put together cannot order 840 aircrafts. So numbers are very big in our case. So if you can have a concept of SS, then you can have dialysis working on poor, rich, anywhere. You can have cross subsidization, ensure that Mr. Singh will not run away. Yeah, today it may look a foolish statement, please take it as a foolish statement, but if you can look at it some way as a cess on any health insurance policy, this should be because this is going to become, see lifestyle diseases are yes. going to kill India. Uh, I am <coughs> telling there are two, three things, one is cancer, another is dialysis, these are chronic and very costly treatments. Can we have a cess on that? I don't mind putting it on income tax, but there are too many rich people here, so I don't want yeah. to speak of in cess on income tax. So at least health insurance ka upar cess dollar. I am sorry. On all health insurance policy, every premium they have to pay a small amount of cess, very small amount for these two lifestyle diseases. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That's a good thought for uh, scaling up uh, the, this uh, service. So taking the lead from there. I think, uh, Dr. Mehta, you, you have been um, looking at this chronic disease like CKD, chronic kidney disease. Uh, as uh, what Dr. Kedar says, it's uh, just that if you are addressing the end stage of the disease, may it be cancer or may it be kidney disease, ESRD, it's going to be uh, very difficult. So what do you think, you know, to disrupt this field? Do you think preventive care is uh, better here or uh, is it uh, going to also act as an early engagement? So all those who are sub maybe, you know, diabetic or hypertensive are at a very high risk of getting into chronic kidney disease. And then the disease management, you know, uh, how do you think uh, this can be put in place? Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk on uh, this platform. So, uh, sir, as you rightly pointed, that uh, as a nephrologist, what we see many times, especially in government centers and even in private centers, uh, a lot of patients present to us at a very advanced stage of kidney disease. So by the time they present to us, there are not many options left with us. There's only dialysis and transplantation. There's not much of medical form of therapy which we can really offer because it is such an advanced stage at which they are coming that no medicines would work at that point. Uh, so addressing this, I've always wondered, uh, why don't we pick up this disease at an early stage? And how would we be able to identify it at its inception? Now, to answer this question, it's very simple. I've, I've always felt they have to have some health screening programs in schools. Annually, schools having health programs wherein you are testing every child for a set of diseases. 
A simple test like a urine examination can pick up kidney disease at its inception. Unfortunately, we don't have that in place. So by the time the kidney disease manifests, the creatinine has already gone up and we've lost the game. But if we start doing these things like uh, health programs at school levels, whether it is government funded or if the private players take up the job, but you know, I mean, every school can have these programs and we can uh, have health trackers or apps which can actually, actually tell the parents whenever there's any deviation of the parameters. Simple tests and the uh, reports are in the app which the parents can get informed of if there is any deviation. So that is the most important thing. I think at an early stage itself, hmm. we can pick up the kidney diseases. That is number one. Number two, as we know that India is the diabetes capital of the world now. And Diabetes is the most common cause of chronic kidney disease. Each, every diabetic has a 40 to 60% chance of developing a kidney failure. Yes, so we need, how do we, how do we identify this at an early stage? By the time these guys are identified again, they, they know they have diabetes. They know that they are prone to develop a kidney disease right. and other diseases, of course. But unfortunately, by the time they get to know that they have a kidney disease, it's already out. So we don't really have too much to offer. So again, if there are any applications which can, you know, once you are diagnosed with diabetes, there could be apps, there could be technology which can help them track their health. You know, the placing right. the health in one's own hand because it's not going to be possible for any program to be able to cater to every individual who is having diabetes. So uh, if, they, if there are applications which can, you know, tell them that, okay, if you're a diabetic, you need to screen for your kidney diseases once every year by doing these tests and how frequently do you do it and from when do you start screening so that is the most important thing that they can identify their kidney disease at an early stage and just like diabetes there are even other inherited diseases right. where the parents already are having it for example polycystic kidneys right. one of the commonest uh, inherited kidney diseases so the parents are already aware that they are suffering from it and they know that the child has a i mean 100 percent chance of getting it so how, how to monitor it? When do you start screening and how frequent do you screen for it? All of this is something like an educational material in the form of either apps or whatever. There are many platforms in which we can put these things up and the people would be more aware to you know, screen the children so that as soon as there is an inception, there, as soon as the child is detected, the right. treatment can be started. There are options in treatment in the early stages, but not in the advanced stages. So I think uh, technology needs to play an important role in screening and identifying a disease at an early stage where there can be medical measures to halt the disease or at least halt the progression or slow the progression of the disease so that they don't end up in dialysis early. Thank you. I think uh, the mobile apps are a solution for this to a greater extent. Yes, yeah. definitely. That's what Mr. Prasanna was saying. Yeah.